Okay, so she is an Aussie doodle and she's got a great coat. So what I'm gonna do is, the first thing that I like to do, especially if I don't bathe them, is I like to just run my hand over their body to just check their top line, check to see if there's any, you know, a lot of these dogs have these legs in the front that are, you know, easty westy we call it. Um, so I'll feel them and get a feel for their body structure and then I can kind of know what kind of haircut to give them. Because I don't like to do just a haircut that I do on every single dog. I, I try to give every dog a little style and give them angulation, try and correct their top line. And your client, it doesn't take any, mu any more time to do this. Your client- this, this is a really, really cute little dog. You can't and... have her. Why? Go away. Why? Because she's mine. But, but you could love on me. her. You could love on her. I have a black and white poodle I could almost trade. Um, maybe later. <laughs> no, I'm really sad. Don't be oh, sad. I'm always interrupting you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Love you. Love you more. Okay, so she has a little dip in her top line. And if you hold up her tail, her, her she's a little maybe high in the rear. So I'm just going to comb this up. I'm going to take an attachment comb. This is our number one. And I'm going to start right here in the middle, right after the dip. And I'm going to just take all of this hair off. And I can, you can go shorter if you feel like this isn't taking enough off. Again, talking with your clients, finding out exactly what type of a haircut they're looking for. I, I will recommend them bringing pictures in. If they kind of see a dog online or they see a picture of how they want their dog to look, I recommend and encourage pictures. Um, in your salons, you can actually take pictures of different haircuts in different breeds and have either a one of those continuously running picture frames in the front on your desk, and then they can kind of look through it or you can make a photo <laughs> album. But so many people have this image in their head of what they want their dog to look like and then they try and explain it to you and it's not what they wanted. We all use different terminology, so it's really hard sometimes to figure out what your clients are looking for. So more communication is better, especially on a mixed breed. And these are mixed breeds. There's no breed standard to, to follow. So um, it's really important, especially when there is no breed profile or standard to, to follow that you communicate with your clients. So again, this is a, a, a one length and I'm following the natural angulation and there's a pin bone here. Okay, this is the point of rump. This is called the pin bone. And what I like to do is take whatever I'm doing on the body and run that from that pin bone straight down. And I generally go to where the bend in the, knee, the back of the leg is naturally. And I will take and I'll just skim this off the top of the hip towards the knee. And then I'll pick up the legs and I'll skim it on the inside of the legs as well. And I'm not pressing real hard when I'm doing that. Just skimming that hair off. We want to give them nice parallel lines, nice straight columns. And then I'll come to the front. And I'm going to pick up this ear and I'm going to take this all down the shoulder and the front chest. And I'm just, I'm pressing hard here. I'm letting my clipper do all the work. And this clipper, this is our ZR2. This is our new cordless. We have just a Pulse DR and this is our two. The difference between the two clippers is this one is a runtime of three hours now and it has a removable battery. So this one will last a little bit longer and you can remove the battery and you can either charge the battery or you can charge the whole clipper on, on the case, on the um, face. You're a good girl. And if you see a dog that, you know, we ultimately want to make their structure look better. So if we have a dog that's super long bodied and we want to make it more square, shorten it up a little bit, you can leave more here, here, and more here, here. That's gonna give the illusion that they're shorter backed.
so, and by leaving a slight neckline as well, will give that more of an elegant neckline. And you can apply this to any, any breed. Shih Tzu's, stand up, stand up. And I'm just gonna run this right underneath her, her body. And if we wanna leave, say, a little tuck up here, okay? Again, by leaving this hair, you're gonna make the dog look shorter back. If we took all of this tuck up off, look how much longer she looks, okay? So by just leaving a little bit of hair here, it's giving the illusion that she's shorter. I'm gonna come right underneath the armpit, and I'm gonna come right into that tuck up. Now generally, most dogs tuck up starts at the last rib, okay? Her last rib is right here, so I'm gonna come this from this point, and we could actually grow this hair longer here, and then that would really make her look short. She doesn't have it, so I come straight down at that rib, and I really take this off short here. And I'll even go reverse. And when you're using your attachment combs, no matter what, what brand you use, make sure that you're practicing and playing with them. And what I do is, just like my other clipper, whatever blade I have on my clipper at the time is the blade I use for everything I need to use it for. I don't ever, I'm not switching and changing blades because that's adding more time onto the groom. So you wanna make sure that you really use your clipper wisely. It's there for you, it's there so that you work smarter and not harder. So I'm gonna just really quickly do the same thing on this side that I did on the other side. Take this all the way down to the elbow on the front leg. Come from behind the ear. And get this whole chest off. And you can even say switch to a shorter blade on the chest. If you wanna really make that dog look shorter, do this shorter and do this shorter. And sometimes, with, especially with this color coat, it throws your eye off. A lot of the party colored poodles or um, like even springers, anything that has different colors to it will, will throw, you off, throw your eye off. So sometimes you'll have like a big white, a white patch here and that's exactly where your eye goes to. So you can change the, the trim a little bit to make that not stick out so much. Again, making that dog that's on your table look better is what we wanna do. And I'm coming from, again, this pin bone straight down in the angulation and I'm leaving this because I want to make a nice angle on her tail. And her, her top line is pretty level now. Um, her, tail set, she, her tail set's good. If her tail set was lower, you can leave hair here. Again, to leave that illusion of a, a level top line. I'm gonna come right underneath. And most of the time, most dogs are matted where? In their armpits tuck up. If you have a client that the dog always has mats in the tuck up, don't leave the tuck up. You know, do it a little shorter in that area. I don't ever shave armpits unless they're matted. I feel like if you shave an armpit that's not knotted, when it grows back, that hair, those little pieces of hair, when they're walking, playing, whatever, is twisting. So inevitably, the next time they come in, there's gonna be more mats. So unless they're not knotted, you're okay, Smoke. You're okay. I know, you saw your mama come back. Good girl. Um, so I'm just gonna come under and get this armpit nice and tight with whatever blade I'm using. But I will not come in and shave these armpits. And that's just, that's just my personal opinion. You guys, if that's what you're accustomed to doing and you doing it that way works for you, then, then do it. 
So her coat is a little straighter. Um, she does have some, some nice body to it. I wouldn't say a curl, but she's got some nice wave. So I may not, on a, on a client that says wants their dog a little fuller, I may, I may not back brush it. If it's a dog that, you know, is short, I'll back brush this hair. But on this type of a coat texture, and if they want it left a little fuller, I won't do that. And sometimes this is a one. This is a number one. And sometimes with the doodles, they want them to have that really nice curl and wave to their body after they're being groomed. And after they're being groomed, they're fluffy and blown out and straight. So I'll take a spray bottle with water in it and spray them down and kind of just pat their hair down and bring, it brings that curl back to them. So a lot of customers like that. Okay, let's get some of this hair out of the way. And I'm gonna change. Now I've done everything that I need to do with this length of blade, blade length, okay? So now I'm gonna go to an O comb. And this is gonna leave it just a little longer. And again, I'm feeling the front leg and she's a little crooked in the front. Come here, you're fine. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna skin this, all this hair off the front. Put your head out. I'm gonna make that parallel line with my clipper. Okay, so I got that, that all of that is straight. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to skim that all down the leg. And I did that on the inside of my back legs with my number one. But now I'm going to come down into this area and very lightly take my O comb. And I'm just going to skim this hair. And in the beginning, you might be real nervous to do this because you think the dog's gonna move. Always have a hand on your dog. You can anticipate when they're gonna move if you keep a hand on them. So very lightly, and if you're nervous, you can do an A or even something longer. But using your blades to work for you is really what you wanna do. You wanna get to know exactly the look that each, each blade is gonna leave. So I already kind of just did a little taking off it looks so much better and I'm going to take and I'm going to do this on the outside and again to shorten her up we're going to leave a little more hair here I'm not going to take a lot off but I'm going to skim it and this allows me more time and really less time to scissor so the more time you spend using this the less scissoring you're going to have to do and I'm just taking and I'm just skimming all this hair off. I'm gonna take down the hock as well. And again, make sure that your client is on the same page with you about the length you're gonna leave. And it's hard really the first couple of times that they come in. Again, they have an image in their head of what they want their dog to look like and sometimes it's not what you did. And it's okay. Next time, tell them, bring me a picture. Um, give me a better understanding of exactly what you're looking like, what you're looking for. I'll have, you know, these Bichon clients will come in and they'll, they'll bring me a picture of the show dog that's perfectly, you know, proportion, has great structure, and they come in with, you know, this really long-legged Bichon and a, a nose, a muzzle this long. I can't do that on your dog. And it's okay to be honest with them and let them know that I'll do my best to make it as round as I can, but we need to grow the head fuller or whatever you need to do to make that dog look better. But it's all about communi communicating with your client. 